This is Laura. Laura is going to be our model today for the DVD and we're going to start off by taking a couple of shots of Laura with the most commonly used artificial light source, an on-camera flash. Big smile, great. Okay, so we've got the shot, but look at the results. They're pretty disappointing. The harsh black shadow on the background, the flat, unflattering lighting, and even a touch of red eye. It's not what we want to achieve. It's a bit of a snapshot, really. Okay, let's start playing with some lights. It's a good idea to make life even easier for yourself to dim the room lights down so that you can really see what you're going to get. We've seen that by putting a light source at our camera position, the results are pretty awful. But we can improve that very easily by moving our light source to a position at 45 degrees around from the camera and moving our model out from the background. Just look at the difference that lighting's made. No shadow on the background, and we've got a shaded side on Laura's face that shows a three-dimensional effect. This is much better, but it's not ideal. Look at the heavy shadows on the side of Laura's face. Not tremendously flattering. Remember that when the flash fires, it's a lot brighter than the modelling lamp. Therefore, the shadows are going to be darker. We could, if we wanted to, add a second light from this side to fill those shadow areas. But even something as simple as a white piece of paper can push enough light in to those shadows to relieve them. A purpose-built reflector panel is a much better option because it's much more efficient. Of course, the important thing with a reflector panel is that it must be positioned correctly. And rather than someone holding it, by fitting it into the special holding arm, it can be pivoted into any angle or position, and then when you're happy with it, it can be locked off. Lighting from below is very unnatural, because we're all programmed to see light from above. So the position of our main light should be slightly above our subject's head. When I move the light up, you'll see that it suddenly becomes more natural looking. Now, the basic principles of studio lighting is that the bigger the light source, the softer it gets. If you can imagine how harsh the sunlight is on a day where there's no clouds and there's a clear blue sky, deep shadows, very hard edge shadows as well. The sun is an immense light source but it's also 93 million miles away. So in relation to me, it becomes a very small light source. If, however, you go outside on a cloudy day, you've got cloud cover from horizon to horizon, and the whole dome of the sky becomes the light source. A very soft, delicate light with hardly any shadows. Let's make the light softer by fitting an umbrella. When fitting an umbrella, remember to focus it so that the light reaches the edge but doesn't spill over. Silver umbrellas give a high contrast sparkly light. Very good for young people with good smooth skin and used a lot in the glamour industry for those sparkly images. Now, let's try a white one. The white umbrella gives a much less contrasty light much softer and much more natural and is very suitable for most subjects. And finally, the translucent. The translucent or the shoot through umbrella moved in really close can give the softest light achievable from a brolly. The difference between umbrellas can be quite subtle and is more easily seen on a photograph. Let's compare the results using a silver umbrella on the left and a white on the right. The silver gives a much higher contrast and much more sparkly light. And now look at the difference between a white on the left and a translucent umbrella on the right. Both umbrellas give a much less shiny light, but the translucent is quite a bit softer. The reflector should also be placed at an angle of 45 degrees, so that it reflects light from the main light to this portion of Laura's face and then graduates off as it comes around. Up to now we've had Laura facing the camera position. This isn't very flattering because it makes anyone's shoulders look very wide. But now we have a choice. We can either turn Laura towards the light or we can turn Laura away from the light. By turning Laura away from the light, we will accentuate her figure because the light is falling across her. 
So first, let's prepare the camera, ready to take some pictures. The main camera control dial should be set to manual. To get the best image quality, I'm going to set my camera to 100 ISO. The shutter speed needs to be set to the flash synchronization speed for the camera. In this case, 125th of a second. If you're shooting digitally, you need to make sure that your white balance is set to automatic, although some photographers may wish to do a custom white balance setting. The only other setting we need to make is the aperture and we need a flash meter for this. This is the flash meter. It's a vital tool of the trade and it measures the flash output from your studio heads. The shutter speed is here and after we've taken a flash reading, the correct aperture will appear here. I've decided that my shooting aperture should be f8. So I'm just gonna to check to make sure that the light hasn't changed. The sync lead is plugged into the flash meter and I'm going to take a light reading from the side of Laura's face pointing towards the main light. I fire it, the light gives me f8 and I'm going to set that onto my camera. I just need to replace the reflector into the correct position at 45 degrees and we're ready to take some pictures. Look at the lighting on Laura, it's absolutely gorgeous. Lovely soft shadows, beautiful modelling and three-dimensionality. But look at the background, it's gone grey. It's a white background, but because we haven't put a light on it, it's not very nice. So let's see what we can do to improve that. This is a simple pop-up background, which we can just lean against the wall behind the subject. And just by doing that, makes a tremendous difference to the photograph. Just look at the difference. Just by putting a blue background in behind her, we get a much more professional looking shot. Let's recap on the position of the equipment. Firstly, the main light is set slightly higher than Laura's head and at a position of 45 degrees around from the camera. The distance between the front of the umbrella and Laura is about one meter and it gave a flash reading of F8. Secondly, the reflector panel is placed in a similar position on the other side to fill those shadows. All we did was to add the background. Let's look at some examples taken with this simple setup. 